So now that we've looked in great detail how skeletal muscle works, let's look at the other muscle types by entitling the next flowchart just that. Other muscle types. And we mentioned in the very first video and flowchart on this lecture that there was skeletal muscle. We've gone over that. And there's also cardiac and smooth muscle. So let's take a look at both of those. Let's begin by taking a look at cardiac muscle. So as the name implies, this is of the cardia of the heart. And this muscle is also going to present itself in a striated appearance. It will be striped if you look at it under a microscope because of the arrangement of myosin and actin. But something that's going to be a little bit different, so this is a similarity between it and skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle is going to also present itself with branched muscle fibers. And branched muscle fibers are not seen in skeletal muscle, but are exclusively seen in cardiac muscle. In addition, cardiac muscle will function with the following idea in mind. Make sure we have a lot of successful and simultaneous contraction. Cardiac muscle's function is to beat the heart. That's a big part of living. It's a very important process that has to continuously and successfully and cohesively happen. So because cardiac muscle, which is found on the walls of the heart, allows the heart to beat, there's going to be a specific mechanism by which it does this. And that is the following. What we see in cardiac muscle is that different areas of the heart, we'll get to circulation and the heart uh, a little bit later in this part of the course, but for right now, just know that different areas of the heart maybe the top of the heart or the bottom of the heart, whatever they may be, have to contract simultaneously, meaning at the same time, at once. And in order to promote this simultaneous contraction, the heart, the cardiac muscle itself, will have structures called intercalated discs. And in order for inter or via intercalated discs, do we see the heart allow it to, or have the capability of simultaneous contraction? How so? Intercalated, intercalated discs, which are just openings between heart cells, adjacent cardiac muscle cells of the heart, what we see is that there are going to be specific junctions that form. These are just openings between cardiac muscle cells that are going to allow ions to pass between the cells. And if you remember, ions, usually positive ions, are those that are going to allow for an action potential to successfully go through the cell as well. So if you have these ions passing between cells via these intercalated discs in an attempt to contract simultaneously, what you overall sort of see at the very, very uh, simple level is that action potentials are going to move quickly throughout the heart for this reason, because of this sort of openness between cells and cardiac muscle cells specifically found within the heart, all in order to contract simultaneously. So this is what you have within the heart. Now, in addition, cardiac muscle is not muscle you control, meaning that cardiac muscle can and does contract on its own, okay? Can contract on their own, okay? These muscle cells can contract on their own. It's not something voluntary. And this is going to basically be the reason why you always will have your heart beating because you always want your heart beating. So it makes sense that you don't have to control this. If there's a process that you want to be automated, it's heart beating because you always want it to be happening. Therefore, the contractions that occur through cardiac muscle happen on their own. Now, the reasoning behind this in addition to this idea of intercalated discs and simultaneous contraction is because the heart cardiac muscle cells are highly permeable, highly permeable. They really allow positive sodium ions to enter them. And if you remember, positive sodium ions, if you have an influx of this, this causes a depolarization. And if you're very permeable to sodium ions, you're going to have lots of depolarization Lots of depolarization means lots of excitation. Lots of excitation means lots of spontaneous 
The word here is critical, spontaneous, meaning on its own. Spontaneous action potentials combined with quick moving action potentials gives you a successfully beating heart. Why? Because cardiac muscle is arranged in the following manner and functions in the following manner to give you the beating of the heart in this very specific and highly regulated form. So that's our look at cardiac muscle and the other muscle type of interest to us was smooth muscle. So let's take a look here. Smooth muscle, which is the third type, can be found on the walls of several different parts of the body. Specifically, the digestive tract, or DT, can be found on the walls of the bladder, can also be found on the walls of the uterus, that's something we saw during reproduction lectures, and also on the walls of many blood vessels, which I'll just abbreviate as BBs. So these are all things that have one thing in common. These are all not attached to any sort of bones. These are free sort of floating organs. And these are things that are involuntary. Our digestive tract, our bladder, the functioning of the uterus, the blood vessels. We don't control these things. And therefore, smooth muscle is going to have the following sort of arrangement as well. Smooth muscle will not be attached to bones. And if it's not attached to bones, it is not a part, let's say, of the musculoskeletal system. But also, smooth muscle is not striated. It's not striped. Therefore, it's also not highly organized. So I'll write that down. Not in that highly organized sarcomere unit arrangement. It's much more simply organized than that. We don't need to get into the details. And this gives you sort of two things that are very dissimilar between skeletal muscle and smooth muscle. The lack of attachment to bones and the lack of striation. So not attached to bones, not striated, thus not highly organized. In addition, smooth muscle, this goes into its lack of high organization. Smooth muscle possesses no T-tubules, doesn't possess T-tubules, and does not possess a well-developed GEB for developed SR, sarcoplasmic reticulum. This is overall smooth muscle. Um, it possesses a less efficient system for delivering messages because the messages being delivered here are going to be involuntary. And these are just going to happen sort of on their own without our need to interfere. We consider smooth muscle to possess or you utilize slow and sustained, meaning that it happens continuously and successfully, long, involuntary contractions. So you do not need to tell the walls of your blood vessels to dilate or constrict. These are all involuntary, um, surf involuntary processes that occur via smooth muscle in these areas and others. Mainly these are these internal um, synth parasympathetic events that we see like resting and digesting. All of those involve a lot of smooth muscle as we saw from our nervous system lectures. That covers our look at the other muscle types. We are done with muscle in this lecture and we'll just conclude in the next two or three flow charts at the other half, musculoskeletal. Now we'll look at the skeleton in the next couple of flow charts.